Reich, que va a hablar sobre optimización automática de peering con SDN, desafíos y soluciones. Adelante, Reda, por favor, 15 minutos hoy. Slides. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank uh, LACMOG to give me the opportunity to be here at this great event. Uh, the next presentation really is to explore a role of an SDN. Um, um, SDN-based uh, automation uh, in a peering environment, um, and hopefully uh, looking at possibility in how to solve complex operations uh, that related to peering, um, peering and optimization of the peering endpoints. So uh, peering is not something new, and it's fundamental to the networks. But the recent, um, the last few years. A lot of factors has contributed to making uh, peering operation, especially very, very complex and challenging. Uh, where let um, us and some of you thinking about possibility to apply automation um, and actually identify some of the use cases where this automation could, uh, could basically simplify uh, the complex task of dealing with peering, peering issues or optimizations. Uh, we'll talk about those use cases. Um, as well as some of the challenges on how to implement this solution. So one of the factors that, um, as I mentioned earlier, that contribute to making this uh, peering operation challenging is the, it's not the traffic itself, but the nature of the traffic. So uh, the nature of traffic becoming very unpredictable, uh, spikes based on uh, the type of traffic we, we're experiencing today compared to 10 years ago, uh, online gaming, streaming, uh, some update that comes uh, online which cause uh, for an hour huge spikes, which makes the traditional planning um, uh, uh, very hard to cope with this kind of uh, uh, traffic nature. Another factor, uh, performance. So uh, performance today is not just uh, a differential for service provider or enterprise, is really a must have uh, for certain business or application to operate. Uh, examples will be financial companies that need to have certain latency uh, to be able to, uh, to function, or application, for instance. Uh, resiliency for a CDN type of content that need to have uh, load balancing, for instance. So, so uh, which lead us to really address performance and not something nice to have. So it's a, a must, uh, must have uh, uh, factor here. Um, so the recent few years, again, we had massive information about uh, network via analytics and uh, the different tools and organization that provide us with a lot of, lot of information. So information such as within your own network, um, that like uh, the classical utilizations, uh, packet drops, packets in and out, and this type of stuff. But beyond that, now we're able to have uh, application-based traffic. Uh, we, are, we are able to have a lot of information about uh, user experience outside your network, cross networks as well, cross, uh, cross the internet. Um, and the question comes in mind, so there's a lot of data, a lot of information, so we are aware of certain uh, uh, issues happening in the network now that we, we weren't before. But how do we, how do we leverage this data? How, how can we take this data and apply it to solve some of the peering challenges or complexity? Uh, clearly, um, do, we're not equipped today uh, without, uh, without uh, sophisticated mechanisms to be able to absorb the data, put it in a context, and address it on the same time. Before going into how can we uh, automate some of the peering things, I just want to highlight some of the current limitation we have today. So uh, two things come comes in mind. Uh, number one is the, the technologies that we have. So BGP is the uh, main protocol for inter-domain um, inter uh, networking. Uh, BGP is a great protocol for what BGP meant to, to do. 
Uh, but PGP also is uh, not aware of capacity or uh, real-time link utilizations, end-to-end uh, um, -end intent, for instance. And uh, um, the shortest path, not necessarily the best path, given all the KPIs, all the business rules we have today that we're trying to achieve. So uh, we need more than just a shortest path. Um, in addition to that, there's the organization factors. Beyond technology, there's a cultural way of doing things or organizational way to do things. An example of that will be uh, today if we have tools to, to, uh, uh, to detect certain anomalies in our network, traffic is flowing or through a peer that's not supposed to go or, uh, uh, or basically uh, congestion happening. Um, we have to follow process, uh, process different from one organization to another, but basically an example of process will be to look at this, analyze the data, um, do modeling, uh, propose a solution, have to be approved, and then address it. Um, and that sometimes is very lengthy, especially it's between uh, different organizations within the same company which clearly um, it's, we're still in a reactive mode and sometimes we, don't, we can't even apply those changes uh, given the, the, the lengthy process. Um, quickly, um, so what are the objectives? What is all this business need to be able to do? So um, the classical uh, things, it's bandwidth management, resource management, but it will be able to offer better SLA, or like I said, to be able to have applications uh, that function because uh, latency and performance are key for certain applications, and maybe leads into CapEx or OpEx uh, saving. Uh, what we need to address that, um, ingress or peering use cases, as well as uh, we could be touching different several networks. So, so let's, uh, let's skip to the solution itself. Um, so basically, the, the, if I have to summarize the solution is uh, we need to define the business intent. What are we trying to achieve here? Is it congestion? Is it cost? Is it, is it all of it? Is it latency? And then from that, it has to translate into network intent and traffic intent. Uh, from there, the, the solution has to provide an alternate or uh, a way to mitigate that problems or solve or attend the intent. Um, it seems to be clear. It seems to be simple to do that. So what do we need to be able to achieve that? Uh, number one, we need to have uh, a topology, a network topology discovery, uh, various protocols, as you've seen in the slide. Um, be able to maintain that topology, be able to aware of topology. It doesn't have to be the full network that we manage. It could be key point of the network that we need to act on it, depending on the intent. Number two, we need to collect a lot of data types, um, types like uh, statistic, traditional statistic, interface, interface stats, LSP stats, uh, as well as flow-based, uh, be able to do sampling flows, and also application-based traffic if we are into that uh, business of uh, defining uh, flow based on uh, applications and be able to steer traffic based on application. If latency is a constraint or it's uh, intent in your business or, uh, or network, then we have to find a way, a mechanism to be able to uh, calculate latency across an end-to-end -end and be able to collect these results on a regular basis and also to inject it into the, the, the solution. Or you have to find a way to, um, to import the latency information from a different system if you, have, um, if you have a centralized system for latency or analytics, for instance. Once we have all this information, um, that get triggered um, to start doing, solving the problem. Uh, and that will lead us to the action part of this. So the first part is really understanding, knowing the network, collecting the data, um, analyzing the data, put it in the context. Then after that is really to act on the network itself. Acting on the network is be able to steer the traffic based on the intent. And we'll see some use cases in the next slide or so. Um, the complexity that you have today, uh, people who are doing this kind of work manually today or semi or semi automatic, the complexity is not going away. Uh, the, autom the complexity has to be absorbed in, in this particular automation. So things like multi vendor environment is challenging, especially when we want to push an action, it has to be uh, standard cross vendors, cross releases. That's something that has to be taken into consideration within the solution, as well as 
the type of data that we want to collect, where to collect it, what type of, uh, what type of network elements in the network we need to collect this data, uh, the intervals we need to collect the data, as well as uh, the sampling, for instance. Uh, latency also is uh, challenging, given uh, the various protocols out there and uh, various uh, vendor-specific protocols or lack of, uh, uh, lack of standards across vendors, how to measure latency and end-to-end -end latency. There is a human factor that we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about here. I'm, I'm just going back for a few seconds here. There's the human, the cultural factors, how much automation we need to do. Um, what is it that we need to, um, we need to um, change in the cultural uh, behavior to be able to uh, automate this? So I go quickly to the use cases here. Um, let's think about uh, the egress traffic coming in. And my business intent in this scenario here is congestions. I want to avoid congestion, for instance. Uh, you can notice here that there is, uh, um, there is two, there are two elements here that part of the solution. So one analytic engine that's capable of uh, absorbing the data that we talked about statistics and some of it, depending on the use case, and be able to have uh, TCA thresh, uh, threshold crossing alarms, for instance, or KPI violation to trigger the automation. We also have um, an engine, an SDN controller. In this case, it could be something else, but um, I picked an SDN controller here. That be able to have, first of all, you understand the network, you understand the topology, you understand that it has um, a TE uh, database um, in that inside this controller, as well as resources awareness. Uh, you understand what the resources, what booked uh, bandwidth, what bandwidth has left, what utilized bandwidth is there, and you be able to um, uh, classify the resources in your network. Then basically, the trigger of this is uh, being proactive, obviously. So there is a TCA that get violated. And once the TCA get violated, it, start, it kicks, the, uh, kicks the process to automate that. So um, the analytics raise TCA. Uh, the controller will look. The solution itself looks at what are my top end flows or my applications, if I have these capabilities, that actually causing this problem. So I don't want to change all my BGP, all my routing or IGP to solve that. And that's the value added on this kind of approach, is I want to take my top end flows that are causing this problem. If I remove those type of flows, this, uh, this congestion will go away. That's number one, so identify the top end flows or the applications. Number two is be able to find an alternate path and not just any alternate path. An alternate path actually does not uh, um, cause me uh, that will, first of all, it has to have the capacity to absorb those inflows, and as well, uh, capability to, uh, uh, if I put those inflows that I moved, I won't end up in the same situation as before. Um, as elaborated in this scenario here, where I find another one. This alternate path, it could be from the same ASBR, another network interface that has the capacity and can reach the destination. The other scenario could be a different ASBR altogether. Then after that, I just need to steer traffic at that particular flows and flows traffic or top applications could be um, Yahoo or business applications or, or Google or YouTube or whatever that are causing this problem, steer them to uh, the alternate path. Uh, it could also uh, alternatively create, if I don't have a path from my PE, uh, from my source, all the way to the exit point, I could, that's the beauty of the SDN controller, you could create that on the fly and steer traffic uh, using, for instance, LSP, segment routing, or any type of, of tunnel, uh, traffic engineering tunnel, and be able to steer the traffic to alternate path. Um, as a closed loop uh, solution, we keep monitoring this, and then there is a policy driven that says uh, we be able to, um, be able to put back traffic once this condition goes away. Let's look at the other use case here, which is uh, similar to, uh, it's still egress. I'm still talking about egress scenario, but in this case, uh, we're looking at latency as um, intent or KPI for my business or for my network. Um, for this, I need, be, um, I need to have some kind of latency or probing the network from the PE all the way here and then all the way to the selective uh, prefixes or VIP links that I have predefined before. 
The changes here is you will find a lot of solution doing this from the ACBR out and provide you with the best exit from latency point of view, but really does not solve the problem because the problem it could be within an end to end, it could be here. It could be shortest path from here to here, it's not the best latency you can get. Therefore, you have to measure the, the, from the PE all the, way, all the way down. So we measure this and we apply the changes to the application where we steer the traffic, steer the application based on the best latency to their destination. And that's in going, um, in going closed loop uh, as you monitor, the you monitor the latency and you address the flow, uh, the flow of the traffic based on the lowest latency. Um, same as before, so we have the two engine here, the analytics, the, uh, the latency part, as well as to be able to address through an SDN controller. I'll go a little bit faster. Um, I'll, I'll, it's the last use case. Um, it's the, different from egress peering. Let's look about an ingress peering that actually uh, um, um, mainly service providers, it doesn't have to be service provider, but mainly service provider are, are um, really uh, uh, addressing this today. So you, you're all addressing this today manually or some, some kind of uh, operation uh, uh, fashion. But really in here is similar to both. The, the challenge in here is uh, the only way you can influence the, 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 the behavior change is through uh, the way you advertise your routes. So it's different than actually changing, uh, adding a flow or pushing flow specs or actually changing the rib tables. So in this case, we need to actually uh, change how we advertise the routes. So again, the detection is based on detecting the, we, we look at the traffic, there is a spike in the traffic. We look at the top, uh, top BGP community traffic uh, that's coming in. So we know those are the top BGP traffic that I need to steer. Uh, monitor the end to end, find an alternate, maybe a different uh, transit point, and actually change, inject, um, inject my routes, uh, either po using policy or route injection to be able to influence that traffic. Um, it, yes, it's not guarantee. It's not guarantee that the upstream provider will respect that or will basically implement those steering, but still will solve some of the percentage of the solution. Um, all of the solution before, um, I mean, having the extreme automation, um, having, leaving this decision making to the software, it may be a little bit extreme, but you could think about uh, the software or the solution could provide you with the analytics, the, the best path, the alternate path, and leave it to the operator to just push the button to do it or undo the changes. Uh, that's also a possibility you have to consider in your solution. Um, and just closing up, basically, the, the, the automation itself, we think that will add great value in the peering, or at least in some complex things. There's a lot of factor we need to take into consideration. Uh, we mentioned earlier the human factor, um, the, the multi-vendor aspect as well, uh, be able to look at the redundancy and converge time of the BGP. Right. I think I went a little bit fast given the time. The, yeah, questions? questions? Preguntas? Thank you so much Thank for you. your presentation. Applauses. Christian? No?